This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Halbin. Cheers, memory hard. Hello. I almost said wowie zowie again, and then I realized <laughs> that, like, I, <laughs> I've i slowly let wowie zowie trickle into my post cheers. Wowie, oh. And that's I how, don't want it to be my thing. That's how not present I am <laughs> in these cheersing moments. No. It's me just checking to make sure all of the tech is actually on. That I'm like, yeah, cheers made my heart. No. Tech running, tech running, You tech have responsibilities. <laughs> we cheers and I go, wowie zowie. Here we are again, folks. Our <laughs> intro is becoming longer and longer. So, but I, wowie zowie, here we are again, folks. Here we are again. I love this look, by the way. Really? Yeah, I feel like you are going on an audition right now. <laughs> I absolutely look for those listening yeah. Grace and I we are doing this podcast and it's going to be like 30 minutes on the fucking nose y'all yeah. because then we're going to go into traffic and then we're going to head because we are on bar rescue tonight today I'm going to be very transparent today huh. is a weird very weird day, day. very weird I day. got a little bit of bad news this morning I, yeah. everything's all fine uh some energy has been strange yeah and and of course today is going to be the day that we go <laughs> on bar rescue but, we've been talking about this for literally i think years at this point yes and tonight's the night that it's happening so um we uh i personally have a lot of strange energy kind of uh well, jumping all around right mercury now mercury is in retrograde yeah, I, I feel it like is. Mercury has been in retrograde in so many different planets and signs this for month. Like, oh, I was going to say for three years. <laughs> for three years, all the time. There's also like, there's something going on. Obviously, it's Virgo season. And it is. Thank you so much for recognizing. Yes. And also with that, <laughs> the follow up to that is Libra season. Hey, hey. Yes, I also claim that one <laughs> since but, I'm on the cusp. But there is all I re- like see on my Instagram of all of the astrology accounts that I follow. Okay, yeah, me the low down the, it's that hippie. it's like all of these deaths and rebirth cycles right now. oh okay so it's like you're shedding all of this yeah. stuff you're starting new stuff relationships i mean it's the same thing different words we're everything. molting <laughs> we're molting we're all a bunch of snakes molting right it's now. the back to school energy yeah it's that uh who am i gonna be in the world you know like when you go back to school you have to decide what your look is you have to decide oh what God. your folders are you have to decide your entire Honestly, now that I'm talking this, saying this out loud. Oh God, we're having a breakthrough. We are seeing a breakthrough. No, I, I'm I'm connecting the dots of like going back to school was the first um, foray I had into brand building <laughs> growing up. Because you have uh-huh. to go. What is my brand this what's year? What's my aesthetic? What am I? What's the? What am I showing to the world? What kind of folders, shoes, clothing? Did am you I doing? ever have a year? And I'm sure we've talked about this at length. But like, did you ever have a year where you were like actively knew you were going to be a little different than the year before to the point where you were like, I hope no one calls me out. Every year, except no one paid attention to me. <laughs> so it was um, a moot point. I, we would go to, this is what my family did. We would go to the J.C. Penney uh, factory warehouse. Oh, yeah, that we was, didn't have one of those. Yeah, it was a 45 minute drive. And we would go there and it was like, all the designer brands uh, but Arizona at jeans. warehouse prices and it was lawless like yeah. you just ran in things were in crates things weren't even on shelves and you mm-hmm. just found it was just labels just trying to snag labels for cheap prices and so would you try to like go in with a certain aesthetic i mean like because jc penny's mm-hmm. first of all i was a big fan of their arizona brand which yes. i'm not sure if it was related to the iced tea <laughs> F- yeah i oh. don't know I don't know. And the first thing I thought about was the wrapper. I see. I see. No, no, no. The big cans. But they had Arizona, so you could go yes. like a little more like Southwest skater. Right. I, I believe the men's, uh, the boys part of JCPenney's <laughs> was like a bugle boy slash Huskies. Yeah. Remember how there was a jean brand called Huskies yeah. for boys? I mean, we've been exploiting everyone since the dawn mm-hmm. of time, it turns out. Uh, no, I remember just running to the sneaker department, and mm. that's where you tried to find, like, Nike or Adidas sneakers, but, oh, like, wow. for, you know, 20 bucks instead of, like, 70 like or $80. Like, they didn't have the same amount of shoelace holes. No, I used to try and see if I could fit into the men's shoes because there was more options there, <gasps> and they were cheaper. Um, wow. 
Yeah. So I've always been gender bending. See, <laughs> we would go to Haynes Mall in Winston Salem, and uh, I mean that Haynes, w- another huge brand, another <laughs> huge brand. But we'd go to Haynes Mall, and it would be like my dad, since he didn't live with us, so, uh, like he would come home. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to get this wrong. Like if my dad listens to this, he'd be like, I was home a lot more than that, <laughs> but it wasn't his home. You know, it's where like we, we lived. Yeah. So, but when dad was home, I was like, I'm going to get myself some new fucking clothes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. dad's on TV. I'm going to some goddamn yeah, clothes. Yeah, yeah. And I remember going to gap kids, which basically I thought I was the queen. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, I didn't even, we didn't even look at gap. When we were in the mall, because but, that would cost us money if we even made <laughs> eye contact with that store. No, I only got it for a couple of years. Like <laughs> there are very distinct years in which I had money and I did not. But during those good years, uh, <laughs> when I would go into the Gap, first of all, remember their perfumes? It was like heaven, blah blah blah. Yes, I had. I got grass. <laughs> I'm allergic to grass. And yet I chose the perfume that smells like grass. You're and then, facing your fears. I was facing my fears, but it was so funny. I saw like a meme the other day uh, that was like, uh, why don't any boys like, le- like me? Uh, you know, you circa <laughs> yeah. 1996. And it's like, because you smell like lawn clippings. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, me- like when they do studies, they're like, men are attracted to the sense of like cinnamon and vanilla. Uh-huh. And I'm over there just like one of those bags that's attached to a riding mower. Yeah. You're like, remember uh, how your dad uh, ruins your mornings on Sundays? I'm going to smell like gonna it smell like getting woken up early. No, but I remember going to Gap Kids and when it's, you know, and you're going back to school, it's like August in North Carolina. It's still sweltering hot. It's like a junk, yeah. a humid ass jungle. Right. Yeah. But all they have is the fall stuff because, right. you know, when you think back to school, they must just mean like in Maine. Because every- <laughs> <laughs> that's the aesthetic and has always been the aesthetic where it's like, would you like to wear a vest? Yeah. And go. you're like, what are you talking about? It's 95 degrees with 100 percent humidity. I'm going to wear a puffy vest. <laughs> but I remember falling in love with these purple velvet overalls. <gasps> Those sound honestly great right now. Purple velvet. I will dig up a pic. Um, I think I'm wearing them in that that uh, picture. I like truly look like Joseph Gordon Levitt in. <laughs> So I'm wearing, so they're purple velvet overalls and I had like a long sleeve light purple floral shirt to go under it. Yeah. You know, I'm like a, what is it? Monochromatic yes. slut. So anyway, and I just remember being like, I'm wearing these on the first day. God damn it. <laughs> I got, I, I gotta now. do it. And me just, and I walked to school till high school because we lived like two blocks away. And I remember walking and being like, oh God, velvet doesn't <laughs> breathe <laughs> me at all. I'm in head to toe velvet. <laughs> And it was like right around the age you start getting B.O. Yeah. <laughs> we should be like, whoopsie daisy. <laughs> Probably time to wear a training bra. I think I got my first training bra from J.C. Penney's, by the way. Well, I yeah. mean, that's what I mean. That's what they're there for, I guess. Um, I can't believe that they're still in business. I can't believe. Oh, they're rocking malls and rolling. are still in business. I mean, barely. I I love malls, though. I really do. That's the one, not the one, that's one of the many things Mm. that is going to be consistently hilarious to try to explain to younger generations as we go into our older versions of ourselves. You go to this place, you walk around, you hope someone from your high school is also there, even though you all live 30 minutes away. You get a 99 cent (laughs) egg roll and you sit at the food court because there's a food court which basically anything you want is available Mm -hmm. and you get a Cinnabon and an egg roll and then you sit and you look around. And you look around (laughs) and you hope the cute boy from school is there and if he is, you are not going to talk to him. Well, that's like I was saying I think a few weeks ago when I watched the Abercrombie and Fitch documentary that that documentary yeah. one terrible company terrible um, exploitive company terrible ideals that they were putting into all of our worlds uh but also just so heavy nostalgia yeah. of what it actually felt I like smell to, it yeah to be like the thing to do was to go to the mall mm-hmm. like that was the activity but also in that documentary which I think we talked about a little but yeah. like even when I was buying, and by that I mean stealing from Abercrombie <laughs> and like wearing it head to toe, I knew it was weird that all their advertising, everybody was naked. I, you felt, know, I was like, this they wear doesn't the clothes. feel, I'm not religious, no. but on the other end of the spectrum, this doesn't feel good either. Like, yeah, yeah, this like, expression of sexuality doesn't feel safe. Like, why <laughs> is that teenage girl shirtless hugging the back of a other a shirtless boy 
and on like, a horse. And also, like, it, does playing football without your shirt on, is that, like, the thing? Because <laughs> everyone at my high school uniforms. played football with their shirts on. That's so. true. <laughs> shirts versus skins. But I remember seeing that. But also, I was so delusional that in my head, I was like, man, I can't wait to be an Abercrombie model. Same. <laughs> yeah. Like, we talked like- about that. that. I was like, this is the day. I'm not going to dare go in that store because I they know that I don't have the money to pay for any of that stuff. But I'll just stand looking at that store uh-huh and until recognize. they ask me not like an inside the window model like an actual model <laughs> model with hello fresh you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep skip trips to the grocery store and count on hello fresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable that's why it's america's number one meal kit because you guys let's face it it's fall schedules are back up and busy if your schedule is packed then hellofresh has meals covered with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 convenience items all delivered to your door okay they can take your hectic fall weeknights and make them a little more easy and a little delicious they've got quick and easy meals including 20 minute meals low prep and easy cleanup options so take the stress out of mealtime with time saving no fuss recipes in a snap what i love about it is that they're pre-portioned so i don't know how many times i've wanted to make a deluxe meal and then i'm like well great now i have two months worth of fennel no with this you're not wasting anything so you don't feel bad and most of all you're not wasting money plus you guys know that i'm a vegetarian and sometimes with meal kits they don't have many options not with hello fresh there are so many delicious things each week that i get to pick out and then i can always add a protein on the side for chip this week they've got lemony spaghetti with Brussels sprouts, toasted panko, and chives. Oh my God, how good does that t- sound? Oh my God, how good does that sound? I love a lemony pasta, a lemony anything. And they've also got Southwest corn and zucchini flautas with enchilada sauce and queso blanco. Okay, excuse me, am I about to hibernate? Because I want to eat so much of this, I'm stocked up for winter. So, if you want to give HelloFresh a try, all you gotta do is go to HelloFresh.com slash TMGW16 and use code TMGW16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes and 3 free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash TMGW16 and use code Code TMGW16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Oh my God, this is why it's America's number one meal kit. Finding high quality, affordable grocery items in one place is almost impossible in today's world. But thanks to Thrive Market, you can stress less because you can get everything you need and so much more all in one place. Shopping with Thrive Market means that you'll find everything from healthy pantry essentials to sustainable meat and seafood to non-toxic cleaning and beauty products. And it's all delivered right to your door. When you buy from Thrive Market, you can save up to 30% off of the best or organic groceries. I love Thrive Market. Literally, right before recording this ad, I went on <laughs> their website and I purchased myself some ooh all-purpose cleaner, some glass and mirror cleaner, some granite and stone cleaner, and some vegan and cruelty-free mascara. Uh, I'm a big fan. They have literally everything, and it's super easy to use their website, their app. If you're looking for low sugar, you're looking for keto, gluten-free, zero waste, BIPOC-owned businesses, you can filter by 90-plus values and lifestyles to find what works for you. With Thrive Market's fast and easy carbon-neutral shipping, you're also saving a ton of time otherwise spent in grocery lines and parking lots. No, no, we don't want to be there. And best of all, when you join Thrive Market, you're joining in a community of 1 million plus members and sponsoring a family in need. Get convenient, high quality, affordable groceries delivered with Thrive Market. Join Thrive Market today and get $80 in free groceries. Did you hear that? Write that down. That's Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E, market.com slash T-M-G-W to get $80 in free groceries. That's crazy. That's thrivemarket.com slash TMGW. Oh, okay. I wanted to ask you about this. Now that we're talking about like nostalgia and back to school and growing up. I saw this thing the other day. um, Who knows what's on? And it could have been two years ago. Um, (laughs) But I saw this thing that was like, what's something that you thought would be a lot more prevalent when you were an adult based on like how much they talked about it when you were younger. Okay. And this was this someone like a buzzfeed. Well, article. this was like a tweet or something being like, man, I really thought I'd have to look out for quicksand a lot more. Yes! 
<laughs> yes. As as an adult human, uh, just how prevalent it was in eighties movies. I don't even. I couldn't even tell you a movie or a specific instance in which I was introduced to quicksand. Well, however, I have always had a base fear baseline fear of it. Really. Yeah. Couldn't tell you any specific media thing that has like instilled that other than maybe Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> well, Legends of the Hidden Temple, there was also... Um, Those also confirmed like um, boogeymen that boogeyman. would be in your closet. Boogeyman. No, but with Quicksand, there's Never Ending Story, which is oh, like yes, the yes, very yes. sad part. And there's also Princess Bride. They go into like this, you know, and he fully falls into Quicksand. It has to be like <gasps> lifted up by a vine. There was so much Quicksand in the 80s that like I... Is it a thing? Does it really exist? I think, I, you know what? I'm going to look up, is quicksand real? I bet that gets Googled a lot it every day. Auto-filled is it auto-filled. Is it real? Or research- is it just that there's like a, a, there's an actual sinkhole and you're just... Okay, so this yeah. is, um, the first thing that comes up is from 2005. Researchers in the Netherlands and France studied quicksand. Combination of fine sand, clay, and salt water. Okay. At, at rest, quicksand thickens with time, but it remains very sensitive to small variations in stress. At higher stresses, quicksand liquefies <gasps> very quickly. Uh, oh, so like the more you flail about, the looser the looser that oatmeal gets, and you sink it in. Yeah. Also, this is the photo that comes. <laughs> okay, y'all just have, y'all have to Google it. I'll put it on Patreon. Uh, what is quicksand, and learn how to escape it. <gasps> um, See, but here's the thing: is I feel like it's going to be one of those things where they're like, "Hey, you just have to not freak out." That will never be how like I survive finger tra- something. Finger traps. You yeah. know, those uh-huh. toys that you would get. Where Chinese like, finger traps. I yeah, don't know if that's uh, politically that's, I correct. I tried to avoid Sorry. saying the country. Sorry, that's what, they <laughs> that's what they called them. That's what they called them. But when you put your fingers in, I don't know what the purpose of this toy is other than to stress. create stress and also <laughs> to somehow create ah. problem solving in children because they feel like they're stuck there forever. The less you struggle, the less you pull, yeah. the more you can actually pull your fingers out of it. We Look, I know you've been talking about TED Talks and stuff. Yeah. I think you should incorporate finger traps because yeah. though they are such a metaphor such a metaphor for and we life. Were given them as toys. Listen, as I was, children, I was only into stressful parents, stuff. Yeah, what were our parents doing? I, I mean, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was into like face ice cubes with flies in it, itching what? powder. Like I was into pranks. Okay, I get pranks. Okay, this isn't pranks. This is like at the Kmart. We would go uh, and check out, and then if I had a quarter from my mom, I'd play those little yeah. machines. Play them put the money in to yeah, get a toy yeah, yeah you would always win <laughs> i'd always it's my favorite arcade uh and that's the kind of toy that was in those things so it's like really the it's cat- so long the category is like toy like where else would you get them party i City. feel like you could still use it as a prank yeah like if someone didn't know what they do and you had your finger in there and you're like hey put your, stick finger, your finger in here i want to tickle you and then anyone you're stuck says, together with your crush anyone that says stick your finger in here Hey, you be should not stick you your finger in there. You'd be surprised <laughs> how many people do it. Okay, but so quicksand is definitely a real thing. Apparently, quicksand is actually quite common in around the world and even exists in Arizona. Uh, what? Sorry. <laughs> According to oh, no. this news at 12 uh, NBC affiliate in Arizona, after an Arizona man was rescued from quicksand <gasps> in Zion National Park in Utah. Oh my God. You can get stuck in quicksand, and here's how you get out of it, according to this article. How do we get out of it? 2019. If we uh, don't have, like, a prince with oh, vines. They're citing the Indiana Jones movies. Those, There's some more quicksand. That's where I got There's it There's probably from. quicksand in Goonies, and I can't even remember. Probably. Like, every movie was quicksand. Oh, yeah. Princess Bride, Lawrence yep. of Arabia, Jumanji, Scooby-Doo, and the Ghoul School. Uh, <laughs> the it's top, in everything my top three dvd blu-rays right there uh while it's very hard to get out of especially if you're moving aggressively yeah studies say humans can't actually go all the way under stop it and drown because the human body is less dense than the quicksand this indicates that you could be sucked into around waist to chest level but you couldn't sink any further than that wow okay well okay Ooh. but even if it was chest level like That's, i have never never if i'm chest level no. just get me all the way down because i don't want to look at myself stuck like that i mean i want to go all the way or not at all well i was gonna say i was never a person who would be like hey uh, we're at the beach 
bury me. Oh, I are you out of your fucking mind? When what if I there's see, a tsunami? No, what I see, <laughs> well, there's a crab. I think that might have been the very first instance as a child that I had a panic attack. Yeah, was like to be buried like yeah, up to your head. My dad just being like playfully like, hey, let's dig a hole, which is hilarious that that is the activity to do at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you guys wonder why I'm more of a lake person. <laughs> let's dig a let's hole. Let's dig a hole. And we'll put you in it. And then I'm going to fill the hole. And uh, just the not being able to use my hands. It's a head out casket. Yeah. Terrible. Absolutely uh, terrible. No, I saw a video the other day of someone fully buried up to their neck. And then the waves <sighs> were coming close. And um, I was like, do you try? I uh-uh. I love my friends. I love Chip. I don't trust anyone to get me out in time. No. No. What if a dog comes by and pees on you? That's got <laughs> that's got to be an 80s movie. What if I mean if the waves get too close, yeah. there's no world. There's no world. No. So oh. no place is safe. Okay. So, <laughs> so quicksand and then I saw another so then I looked it up cuz I was like what are things that I saw in movies in childhood that I thought would be a part of my adulthood? Yeah. And um okay, two things for me mm-hmm. were putting cucumbers on your eyes yeah. to relax yeah like that was huge and just white cream all over lots of lots of, <laughs> lots and of also white cream. just keeping your hair in a in towel cur- never taking oh, it see, out i do towel. that quite a bit <laughs> okay i wear hair turbans but like no the cucumbers on the eyes of like oh it's been a long day let me pour a glass of chardonnay and put two mm-hmm. cucumbers on my eyes yeah that and also this is weird i have a distinct memory mm-hmm. of being in like fourth or fifth grade and being taught, again, I was not in like Girl Scouts. I don't know if it was a substitute teacher. I don't know the point of this. Okay. But I remember being taught how to administer a tourniquet. What, in fourth grade? <laughs> yes. Well, I fourth- don't even, how, they get administered? Wait, you mean yeah, like, like to how to tie put, off? How to like, and then how you could like, put, you can tie it off, but you can put a stick in there. And then you use the stick as a crank to like tighten, tighten the tourniquet it. from your little kid hands. So to so stop the to blood stop loss. The okay. Yeah. But Why not did CPR I know? or anything? I see it might have been a week where we learned a bunch of stuff, but mm-hmm. as a, <laughs> but that's the only thing that you but, remember. <laughs> but as a child being like, why am I learning how to save someone from losing a limb? I do remember. Yes. A hundred percent. I was I, like, oh, there are going to be tourniquets all over the place when I get older. Oh, man. That just unlocked a memory of going to a um, fair, like, as a younger, this is probably, like, same fourth grade-ish, yeah. uh, but it being, like, a fire prevention, like, fair, where it's, like, it's in the parking lot of, the like, an Aldi's or something. Yeah, and they mimic, yeah, a fire in a tiny uh-huh. house, and they teach you how to stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. And that being, like, oh, we're having fun, like, we're at a carnival, except we're learning how to survive if uh, a, a fire. disastrous event happens. I remember doing it one year. And I can tell you how to do it, though. Well, you didn't really learn how to check the knob. I just remember being like, this house is really cute. I wish I had this (laughs) in my backyard. That's when my obsession with tiny homes came into effect. (laughs) I didn't want tiny homes that will fill with fake smoke. But I remember the first time that happened, I hated the smell of the fake smoke. So that the next year I said I was allergic. As she spritzes grass perfume on herself. So I'm allergic, guys. Huh? Let me put grass all over me. No, but so then I looked it up because I was I, earlier today when I was thinking about tourniquets. Yeah, as of one course. does. Yeah, I was like, what is the thing that people say was prevalent? I was thinking of the quicksand, but when I looked it up as like a Reddit post of what you thought was going to be a lot more prevalent, well, this someone's answer was like, I thought women were going to make me go to a lot more operas. <laughs> And it's, and it's so true. They were like, oh, let me guess. You were going to the opera again? I guess I needed to own that suit with the tails. Yeah. Oh, jeez. You wait. It's date night. Uh, let's go get some wings and see some football. Wait, it's my turn to pick. <laughs> and it's like, oh, and he's falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> fall asleep beside him and an old guy's like oh uh, wake up sir i guess yeah I, <laughs> in that same vein i guess i thought Ugh. opera glasses would be more of like yeah. a thing yeah i wish they were i would yeah I, I truly wish that they uh you know we have all these blue light glasses that yeah i wish that we get blue light glasses with like a the changing opera. <laughs> like you could just change a filter Ugh. that lets you see a little further no <laughs> i remember in I mean, it's not untrue. I remember in Pretty Woman, like when he does, like she, 
Richard Gere gets her all dressed up and they do the little like ah, like mm-hmm. the necklace moment. Then they're at the opera and she's like quietly crying to herself and is like, it's so beautiful. And I remember just being like, that looks so boring. <laughs> like, yeah, is there- I hope I don't have to do that. Maybe they're at a ballet, but I don't know. I wonder how the world of opera is doing. Like, how if is in, it doing in their in how their like understanding of you know how a, a, a timeless of a yeah. art form that is? Right. Do they feel like it's being threatened or in, enhanced oh. by the social media and new media? And well, all I that? wonder because are there as that's a really good point. Are <laughs> are th- <laughs> do as many people still enroll? In right. the opera Do programs pe- of school. I felt like opera was for old people when I was young. I am now. It's always quite, been an old thing. It's shuffleboard, baby. But, right. But now I'm considered an old person mm. and I'm going, I couldn't tell you one person my age I've met that goes, I got some opera uh, tracks and I, yeah. oh, this is the thing that I'm into. Um, also, like, I, I'm sorry to sound like a fucking stupid American right now, but it's not in English. And so unless right. they are really, really selling it, <clears throat> I don't want to just go be confused for two hours. And also, yeah. When at the concert are they going to put the subtitles on? Because this, thank you. Have you found if they I, had a little screen with subtitles, I you, might get into it. <laughs> have you found I didn't click on this, but I vaguely remember the story of a millennial saying something. I vaguely remember seeing a. A uh, headline of an article that said like why the younger generations are obsessed with subtitles. Didn't oh. click on it. Should have. Because However, we read texts. Right. Our so life is subtitled. I'm going. Wow. It takes me so much to mm. get myself to sit down with a book and read for school. Yes. However, I if there's one second of a mm. TV show in which I could not make out what someone said. I ask Elliot or I do it myself, put on yep. the subtitles and then I can't go without them because I'm now just reading, um, which oh. I think is cool in hindsight to be like, wow, look at how much I've read. But also, yeah, I'm not watching a program anymore. I'm literally. So, you know, reading. we're a certain age because you just said program. Yeah. <laughs> what is it called? Television show. show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I put my program, my <laughs> programs on. Yeah, it's just, no opera, but only programs. Only programs. Y'all know that I have made it a point this year and last year to become a better reader. Well, my trick to my uh, propensity to put off reading is that I find a book that I can read and also listen to on Audible. I love it so much. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. You'll discover exclusive Audible originals from top celebs, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. And as an Audible member, I have been for several years, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. All Audible members get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and hello, podcasts that are included with the membership and you can listen to all you want and get more added every single month. We've got another Bar Flies coming up. I just put a post asking for suggestions and I'm going to go through them and make sure our next book club has a regular book and an audiobook so you can listen to it in the car so you can listen to it when you're on a road trip so you can listen to it when you're on your long walks for your mental health so let audible help you discover new ways to laugh be inspired and be entertained new members can try it for free for 30 days visit audible.com slash tmgw or text tmgw to 500 500 that's audible.com slash tmgw or text tmgw to 500 500 to try audible free for 30 days audible.com slash tmgw Oh, but speaking of um, opera, and it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Yeah. I went to a sumo this weekend. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We uh, had a wonderful dinner over here. uh, Date night. Double date night. They made the most incredible, speaking of opera, Italian meal of all time. So so Elliot and I literally like children that got released into like a candy factory the next morning. were just like, oh my God, that was so good. Hell yeah. (laughs) All morning the next day. Hell yeah. It was (laughs) such a fun night. Of course, Chip was like, hey, I'll go get a joint if uh, <laughs> if you feel smoking with me. He comes back, you guys, with a cross joint. No, first of all, he took beans. He goes, <laughs> I'm taking beans. I'm taking beans. To the weed store. And he goes, she loves this shit. And then he <laughs> ran out the door. And then cut to 10 minutes later, he comes back with a cross <laughs> joint. Like it's a full. And he just walks in. He goes, beans was a hit. <laughs> 
Well, our weed store has a French bulldog named Blueberry. Yes. Who lives there. And so, but anyway, so then I said to him, I was like, so the next day I was like, so I came, I'm just remembering you brought beans to the weed store. And he was like, she's been before. She loves our adventures. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> that's exactly what he said. Yeah. She loves the adventures. She loves our adventures. So anyway, but he brought a cross joint. So we got baked. We were baked, baked harder than the pasta. Um, but the next day, Chip got us tickets to the U.S. Sumo Open. My and God. he had gotten these tickets like months ago. And I remember being like, this would be amazing. But also, who knows with life if yeah. you're actually going to be here. You know, he left the next day. So yeah. it just so happened to be he was here. And Grace. I saw your story. And I didn't want to uh, ask too much. Because it looked incredible. It is so so fun but he also looked like very reverent and like respectful at the same time it's incredibly respectful like they come out we were like third row he got us floor seats and it really is like there were um sumo wrestlers everywhere from like um oh god i don't know from greece to new zealand to like it was global right so it was the u.s sumo open but it was crazy so we get there and i just have never watch sumo before and they come out and they're like diapers and but mm-hmm. they, but they also have different weight classes too so you see like oh, yeah. really in shape skinny guys sumoing but then mm. you also see the very heavyweight right. and it's it's crazy they have to do like this certain like pose and they do this yep. like hand movement to each other yep. and like the ref is between them and then i didn't know like when you put your like when Get the last the person to put their second hand so they'll like have standoffs Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, there's like ways, like Chip and I, attitude there. Yeah, <laughs> Chip and I were like, oh, there's all these things of respect we don't yeah. know, or like, you know, like one person won because he did like a sidestep because you're supposed to just come in full force, and if mm. you sidestep, it's an easy way for someone to fall down. Oh, interesting. But yeah. it's also like that's cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get there, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is at like a college campus. This will be fun. It'll be like, you know, a very mid afternoon activity. Yeah. We get there, and it's just plastered everywhere that it's sponsored by Sapporo. They have sake and Sapporo okay. at the bars. And we go and we sit, we're immediately beside this guy, and he just goes, Man, someone just got knocked out and carried out on a stretcher. That's the what? first thing we hear <gasps> is that one of the sumo wrestlers like smacked the other guy's face and knocked him out cold and he was down for like 10 minutes and then went out on a stretcher and it was so so i had that like oh my god am i gonna see somebody knocked out this whole time yeah because it's not wrestlemania but turns out a little bit it is like the (laughs) longest match was probably 30 seconds right which is perfect yeah for my attention, attention span. span. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, keep it moving. Skip ad. Skip ad. But it was so crazy because there's this, like, this, there's this little ref in between them, which I'm just like, you could get crushed at any moment. And also, how does that person get that job? Well, I don't know if he'll have this much longer oh. because he was in head to t- <laughs> He was in head to toe whites with a black bow tie and he okay. stands there with his socks okay. and he has to like ask people like, come clean up the sweat kind of thing. But Wait, it- like he's not socks meaning he's not wearing shoes not wearing shoes in the ring you know because they're barefoot right yeah and so and they're just beasts yeah and uh so they come out and uh so he's there but there were several times first of all there one of the judges there is the largest japanese sumo wrestler of all time and i mean inside by pounds i was gonna ask do you mean by like clout or physicality no he was there in his like sumo robe and he was just and he had a translator for when he like wanted to say something and then he came out at one point and like disrobed for everyone to see and then they had they had a sumo kid there who was like 10 years old and they had them wrestle and he could just kept pushing his head back (laughs) Like it was just like, oh, we're going to have the cute moment where like okay. the kid wrestles the yeah, biggest yeah, yeah. sumo wrestler of all time. It was great. Okay. But anyway, there were a couple times that the ref called it, but he's only seeing one angle. And and the audience was oh. like, no. And then they did playback and the big sumo guy was called it for the other person. See, OK. This it is, was crazy. It was so fun. This is super interesting because when I went to the tennis tournament in Canada, mm-hmm. the like... I remember growing up with tennis and watching and being like, oh, line judges are a thing. And that is like human error that happens where you can question whatever. Now in tennis tournaments, they have everything is automated. It is a um, tech system that however oh really it's like there's sensors in the paint sensors in the lines so oh. that there's not a human being using their judgment to make a call That's however probably football too however then the call that happens the actual like audio that happens is a human voice going uh fault and so you oh. it sounds like someone is there on the court yeah. like 
you know doing this but they've had this forever like they're just like finally leaning into like the technology and that being like what they use you can still question and you can ask for like a, a redo but it feels like the same thing that it's like this ref is not going to be valuable in this field not gonna anymore see, well not gonna see everything i mean right. it was so it was so fun though because then you'd have people like celebrating mm -hmm. and then it would be like uh-uh <gasps> and it'd be like i mean th dramatic they like gave it to this one guy who was like undefeated all day and he was from oh i don't i don't remember exactly where in asia and he was like here it comes and he's like he's undefeated and do it and then he goes against this massive polish dude named like like, like something crazy but their size is congruent like they are however so we so <laughs> hold on. i have two questions that's my first one okay are they competing against yes. the same size person well, but then they do the open so we watched the championships for regular like middleweight and then the heavyweight okay but then they had i guess the women were earlier in the day then they had the women's oh, women. open weight so oh. we watched like a 150 pound woman go against a 400 pound polish woman Whoa. named named like a full-on like erga yeah, or yeah, something yeah, yeah. it was it was crazy wow and okay. she like was just picking people because you the, I, the thing is is to get someone to fall or the first person who touches Pushes outside them, of yeah. the ring she just literally would pick up her opponent by their belt <laughs> and set them outside of the ring but the women are wearing obviously singlets clothing. kind of okay. things yeah second question are they doing like entrance music? Are they no. coming out with any pomp and circumstance? No. Okay. No. The only music that played even the entire day was they had like a very cool like drum okay. a drum group that was like traditional Japanese, which was like super cool. Yeah. Um, but no, it really is just like, and now they say the two names and it's like sudden death. So it's like, okay, oh. now, now you guys are competing for third okay now like it was so cool okay so third question and we were drinking sake and having beers it and sounds it was just incredible so fun. do they have a the same way that boxers have like a person like stitch in the corner that's like fixing all their like oh uh -huh. whatever their bruises their cuts their whatever mm -hmm. like giving them water they don't have like a corner person or anything no not really i mean there was it one, happened so fast there was one guy who went down on a knee for a minute because it looked like he pulled his groin uh <laughs> That has to happen <laughs> frequently. I mean, there's only one specific area that this is getting attention. It's in. crazy, though. They just go at each other full force, just like, blah, blah, blah. And then it looks like they're hugging and they're pulling their, like, diaper yeah. waist belts to try to get them to move. And it'll they're be like a thong. standstill. They're thick thong. Thick thong, thick thong, thick thong. <laughs> yeah. and, but when he pulled his groin, then they, like, called for a medic or whatever. But then, essentially, oh. like, his teammates just came over pulled him up by his thick thong and was just like get it get to get it together man see i'm just curious what the actual training is for. i mean they're so strong because right. even like it's not just body fat it's like full muscle it's to full tell. full muscle i mean there's a lot of body fat but it's full <laughs> muscle too to even to the point where like when you win like they both bow to each other then the loser leaves and the winner like does this squat and mm -hmm. like does their hand like this yeah but even like the squat, I was like, I couldn't do that. Wow. And I'm like, and you are holding up 400 pounds. Yeah. And I, it was, I mean, I'm going next year. I'm dressing as the ref. I like, I'm fully, <laughs> this is my life now. It was so cool. That's, so, my curiosity is like, how much of it is very reverent and respectful and how mm. much is it? of it is like wrestlemania fun like we're here for the event kind no of thing. i mean like we were having fun and there was a front row of people who were definitely like cutting it up and like yeah. drinking and like at one point they like said something and the big the big sumo judge stood up and went like mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah okay he was like, I so, got my eye okay, on you. Okay, okay. so like it's it's loose but it is very oh and the guy who was the translator and the actual host all he did was make puns oh great okay and so and like so yeah, this we is your life now. We actively booed him. This is your life now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Chip, okay, once we secure officially hosting the World's Ugliest Dog Contest, we are now going to be sumo commentators. Yes. And this is just what it is. We have a uh, big vision board ahead of us. Lots right of it. Now. But uh, the biggest thing in front of us. Oh, I forgot. Oh. That just reminded me that the night that we had dinner, Chip was saying he forgot that he was thinking about buying you a sumo belt. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> and just think about the wrestling belts of it all. Well, uh, like, Chip was like, oh, shoot. 
I forgot <laughs> I was gonna buy was sumo belt to go with that. Chip's <laughs> gonna be like, what's with all the impressions of me on this week's <laughs> episode? So, so bad. I only so have bad. one southern accent uh, and it is not representative of Georgia or any other. One last southern. thing I'll leave us with since we're talking about and then we gotta hit the road and go yeah. to Bar Rescue. When we're talking about things from the nineties, whatever, like there really was a golden era of those big sumo suit wrestling. Yeah, the inflatable suits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, it was like I, it wasn't even inflatable. It was like it was like kind of hard yeah. and you just threw each other at each other. Yeah. I wonder if oh, yeah. sumo Yeah. Like they'd be on like rock and jock and like all these like, you know, like the <laughs> I mean, challenge. I, yes, I feel that literally I go MTV. That's the only connection I have to like those sumo suits that I feel like they were either used for couples counseling yeah. or they were used for reality TV. But like the only people having fun were the ones doing it. It was very yeah. boring to watch. Yeah. There was no skill involved, but I wonder if the sumo community hated those. Right. They thought they're like you're making a mockery of of our yeah. like ancient 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 you got anch- it ancient sport. and also like incredibly difficult yeah. <laughs> physical activity that we've spent our life but dedicated I, to i wonder <laughs> how many guys in the 90s were like babe it's fine yeah i spent our savings on these sumo suits <laughs> And a ring, <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's a it's a good business. I feel like um, they got usurped by the inflatable T Rex costumes. True, are the new thing that everyone is uh, being quirky there about. There we go. Well, guys, there we go. We gotta go do this. Man, I didn't even get to. I didn't get to anything. I didn't get to. I thought I had nothing to talk about, and I didn't get to my scallop disco party about oh, how uh, scallops love disco parties. Okay, let's talk about it later. I also made a fake scallop today. I'll tell you about it in the car. <laughs> Amazing, and also there's brand new entries into the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Including... I have that on my thing too. Okay, we'll talk about it next week. We'll talk about it next week. <sighs> this got weird. 